imagined a world for Rosabella where a beautiful textile artist could blossom and carry all of her ideas and pieces of her in her journal. A journal that represented herself, her personality, and everything that she loved. Today we're going to create Rosabella's sewing journal using the newest digitals, fabrics, and other surprises that we have been blooming in the Amity Bloom Garden. I've added countless digitals in the shop as we have been working on so many beautiful designs and treasures that will be in the shop. So if your heart is set on one of these beautiful designed paper bundles, definitely make sure to check the shop in the link below as I'm going to be using pretty much all of these papers as I design them with the concept of Rosabella in mind. And the papers that I think she would carry in her sewing journal, in her textile journal, and as well as journal pages that actually look like journal pages. the cover of the journal I'm using pieces of the digital papers this is from the French wallpaper set that was just added to my shop and this is a little snippet of one of the journaling papers just to show you you can use the smallest little piece to cover anything up and this is going to be covering up this deconstructed book that has some writing on it it's just breaking apart and we're going to alter it and cover it up using Rosabella's papers and fabric. So that's going to be the cover and then the textiles. So this is probably what's making me the most excited along with the papers. These are little snippets of textiles that we're actually going to be having in some bundles very, very soon. Beautiful textile bundles from Rosabella's haberdashery. I love this one because since Rosabella is a Parisian lady, this looks like the Eiffel Tower, this little silver bluish piece in the center. So I love it. This lace was made for Rosabella and I want to layer all of these elements together to create something really beautiful. A journal made for Rosabella for her sewing treasures. This is my front cover. And as you can see, I haven't attached it. It's just one of the digital papers and then I sewed on some of the lace as a pocket, added some really sweet little lace as an embellishment, this piece of textile as like a side ruffle, and then a little trio of antique buttons. I love this one. It's like a turquoise pearl button, something that Rosabella would love on the cover of her journal. And that's the front cover. Here is the back cover. And this cover is actually a pocket. So you have a pocket on the front and a pocket on the back as well. I'm going to be attaching this to the front cover. And then we can move on to selecting the inside papers. This is when the fun starts. I'm going to be taking all of the digital papers and I'm going to be folding them in half. And since I didn't print them double-sided, I'm going to be gluing the back sides to the front sides using pieces of the papers that I've cut apart, also using antique papers that I already have, but I'm going to be sticking to the digital kits just so that you can see how versatile and how all of these papers match perfectly together. I have just finished assembling all of the pages. I have two signatures here that are going to be going into the journal. This is the front page. It's that floral from Rosabella's ledger which you can see here, Rosabella sewing ledger. It says haberdashery. <laughs> Those little details is what makes it so fun. And you can see the little folding lines from the old paper that I used. I 
made this page here piece of some lace that I scanned in. You can see different sized pages to give contrast. This is a really sweet page of Rosabella's patterns. A nice mix of vintage pages as well as the digital pages. This is the middle of the first signature. You can see it looks like an actual book page. That gorgeous fabric sample piece. Some old antique embroidery patterns. So this is the contents of the first signature for Rosabella's sewing journal. And then this is the second signature or the start of the second signature. This is some embossed paper on some piano paper, really old, delicate paper. This is actually a little pocket here. I love this page from the digital kit. These are little samples of Rosabella's lace and her journaling. This is some old writing paper. This page I love, very French. And then this is the middle signature. Some of this old wallpaper that I have, but this is the digital. It looks just like the real thing. You can see all of those textures in there, as well as some French receipts. Here on the back, this is going to be a tuck spot. I just have to sew the top and the bottom. This is the other side of that lace sample page. The other side of that music sheet on these pages is where I'm going to add ephemera and fabric the pages that are a little bit more bare. I love this page. It's such a beautiful shade of pink and the back. I love all the layering. I can't wait to see this journal completed with all of the fabrics, ruffles and trims, and then with the cover attached. I have the signature finished with the fabrics and now I am deciding where I'm going to be placing the fabrics for this signature, the second one. I have this really pretty lace that I think I'm going to add here on the pocket of the music paper. It's gonna be so sweet. And then I can take the ephemera pieces from Rosabella's ephemera kit and I can put them in the pocket as well. And it's see-through, which is great. I love using laces that have mesh on them because it acts as like a little see-through pocket. So you get a double pocket here and then another one behind the paper flap. So I'm almost done going through the whole journal and choosing all of the fabrics that I wanna use. And as you can see, it's a messy process. <laughs> all of the laces, fabrics, and heirloom textiles have been added to the cover to the sides and to some of my favorite pages on the inside. I will of course be sharing a full flip through when the journal is completely finished. But as I was going through the pages, I want to add some decorative tape, especially on the middle of the signatures as I wanna add some decoration. I think they deserve a little design and pop of color and create a hinged effect. And once the washi tape has been applied, then we can start adding the ephemera to our journal. There's a lot of tan and beige, and I am going to be adding some ephemera, probably clipped or perhaps stitched onto the book page. But I want to add some washi tape right in the center. So these are my two options. Going vintage with the lace washi or with the pink. And I always do this before I add washi tape to a page. I like to just test it first. I mean, the pink obviously is a no brainer, but I feel like there's already a lot of pink. So I'm just going to test it and just imagine. Oh my God, that would look so pretty. Beautiful. So now that my journal is pretty much finished, I need to go through and add the ephemera. This is the ephemera, the interactive ephemera for Rosabella's sewing journal. All the ephemera has to do with sewing and haberdashery. Since Rosabella is a seamstress and a textile artist, I thought it was perfect. And what I loved is a lot of these pieces actually came from Rosabella's sewing box, which I will be sharing with you very soon, which is an actual sewing box that I found from an estate sale 
and I just imagined this world of Rosabella and I wanted to put some of the ephemera pieces that I actually have in this sweet little sewing box into a digital kit. So these are the pieces that I wanna put into the journal to make it more interactive and personal. Special pieces like this embroidery frame that you would use to embroider has some fabric from the actual sewing box that I have and then the back so that you could journal. So it acts as a little flip out, just like what I do with fabric I wanted to do with some of the special pieces from this kit. And you can personalize them however you'd like. Now, of course, I'm also going to be using some of the tags. <laughs> I have too many to choose from, but I do want to use some of these and decorate them to put into the journal. I'm going to be also using probably this envelope as it goes with the pink from Rosabella. It matches the roses as roses are her favorite flower. And I'm probably going to be including this envelope into the pocket. Here's the folded envelope. I love how it looks collaged. That was my idea when I created this little envelope set. I wanted all of the areas to have a different pattern on them so that it had more interest and looked as if you collaged the actual envelope. I cannot get over how beautiful they look all together. I immediately want to fill them up with treasures and put them in the journal. So I am in love with these. I hope that you guys love them too. They're just so stunning. And I will definitely be creating more collaged envelopes like these as I think they are so cute. The envelope ended up fitting perfectly in the pocket. And I think it looks really cute. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it there. I personally really like it. But maybe if I want to add something else, like I was thinking, wouldn't the embroidery hoop be really cute in here too? I think that's adorable. But then the embroidery hook, I want it to be an interactive element inside of the journal as like a little surprise, so I'm not sure. This is one of my favorite tags because of the flowers, and I think it goes really well with the button. I think those two colors were meant to be together. That looks really pretty. I love the roses. It looks like the roses are coming out of the tag. I think that's darling. I might do that, even though I still love the embroidery hoop. I have finished decorating some of the tags. It says she loved roses, as I'm thinking of making this the tag that goes in the pocket. Added some really old antique lace and then some embossed paper. And then on this tag, this is originally one tag, the yellow one, and I combined it with that little lace sample ephemera piece from the cut apart sheet. And I also sewed on some really old lace as a little messy ruffle on the side. This tag was already so beautiful with this antique image, so I decided to just add a little lace up at the top and the little bunny ears. <laughs> I also thought with these embellishments, they're the tops of like sewing spools. So just to give you an idea, this is a little sewing spool. It's the top pieces and there's one that's a little smaller and one that's a little larger. I hole punched them and I'm going to be using these button brads that I found at Michael's craft store. So I'm going to attach those to a page. So these are my interactive ephemera pieces and I just want to share with you in case you want to use the same interactive pieces in a journal that you're creating, how you can use them and the best way that I suggest to use them. These two pieces, the embroidery hoop and the dressmaker's steel pins case, they're going to be flip outs, just like what we do with fabric, but this time with paper to have some hidden journaling. I'm going to be adding these little pieces on top of the embroidery hoop as if we're embroidering onto it, really just applying glue and sewing. Since my sentiment is a little bit larger than the actual frame of my hoop, all I'm gonna do is trim this just a little bit. I'll do this, cut it right there. So we have my little page of fabric. Now it fits within the embroidery hoop. So these are little paper strips to mimic your little pieces of fabric. And I'm just going to place them underneath the sentiments or on top, you can pick and choose. So it looks something like this. 
I like to offset it so that the more offset it is and imperfect, in my opinion, the better it looks. So I am just going to take this to my sewing machine and just stitch across so that it connects both the sentiment and the paper. And honestly, if you don't even want to add these little sentiments, of course they come in the kit, you can add any picture in the center of your embroidery hoop. Let's say you want to put your sweet little dog, your cat, your friend, your um, nephew, your granddaughter. Put their image in the middle of the embroidery hoop and then flip it and you can journal on the back. For these little pieces, I'm just going to take a hole punch, take my brad, and then hole punch it to a page. That way it can spin, it can move, and it can even become a tuck spot. So this one will probably spin a little and this one will probably be a tuck spot since it's a little bit bigger. I have been playing around with the tops of the sewing spools, added the little button brad from Michaels, and it works perfectly as a tuck spot. Just add it to the top, the middle, or the bottom of a page, and it's strong enough to even hold an envelope. And this is an envelope that I printed on cardstock, 60 pound cardstock. So it has a lot of strength, and I am just so happy with how just something so small can add such a beautiful detail to a journal. Just goes to show, you can get very creative with how interactive you want your journal to be and how interactively you want to put your ephemera in. There's so many different ways of making tuck spots and pockets, and this is just a small but very creative one. For my dressmaker steel pin, same exact thing. This one, I'm not going to add anything on the front since it's already really beautifully decorated. This is a steel pin case that I have in my sewing collection. I scanned it in and this way I can flip it over and have some journaling space. Or the recipient of this journal can have journaling space. All you have to do is add some glue. I'm using Fabri-Tac. Flip it over, fold it over, and just to be extra secure, I'm going to add some washi tape right on top just to make sure that it's secure on the back. And then here, if you notice, there's a little pointy part sticking out. I am just going to take my scissors and trim it so it still has that circular shape of the steel pin case. That's all you have to do. It's ready to be put into your journal. And this is one of the washi tapes that I love. Of course, I had to match blue with blue. <laughs> and now is the fun part. Now we get to decide where we want to glue our steel pin case to our journaling page. Here I have my hoop already made and decorated. Can you see the lovely little stitches? on the embroidery hoop. I attached it with some glue and now I have my embroidery hoop ready to be included in the journal. Do I tuck it into a tuck spot or do I glue it on a page? Since one can never have too many flowers, I'm also folding up the envelopes from the wallpaper set. These are Rosabella's wallpapers and I cannot bring myself to use them. Even though they're digitals, which you can print out as many as you'd like and use them in your projects, there's something so magical about them. Like if only there were antique envelopes that looked like this. Can you imagine? Or perhaps in the future, let's say 3022, a hundred years from now, people will find these envelopes in our journals. And then these ephemera pieces that we printed out to put into our treasured journals will become antiques for the people who find them in the future. This is one of the envelopes that I absolutely love because of the B from my mom. That's what her first name starts with. 
and she loves blue. So I think I'm going to be gifting this to my mom and making a really sweet happy mail to put inside of here. Perhaps for a future video, would you guys like to see the happy mail that I create for my mom for her special little envelope? I decided to use from the embroidery pages. This is just so darling and it goes so perfect with the Rosabella sewing journal theme. To create the floating pockets, all you need is a piece of paper, fold it in half, and that is the base of your pocket. You can decide to stitch it on the top and on the bottom so you have a side tuck. This way you can tuck your ephemera from this side or you can stitch the bottom and the side which then converts it to a top loading pocket here. You can also do the same on the bottom. This one is really pretty too as it's the embroidery designs but they're colored. This is from the rose wallpaper set and then I cut apart one of the embroidery pages so that I can create a pocket for this floating pocket. So I've just added my embossed paper to the side of my folded paper. I've chosen some sari silk for the ruffle at the bottom. So we keep the color palette really elegant. And then for the pocket that I cut apart from the embroidery sheet, I added some of that gorgeous pink lace that you guys love and I've added it on top of the pocket so that you can see a little bit of the embroidery design and then have some space on the bottom for journaling. I'm going to pass this through my sewing machine and then I'm going to stitch the ruffle and then I'm going to stitch it to the pocket, making sure I don't stitch it closed. I have just finished passing all of my floating pockets through my sewing machine. This one has the blue ruffle and then I added some antique lace at the bottom as a little tab. Here's the precious tag. I've embossed it as well. So you can take your printable tags and emboss them. You don't have to necessarily add embossed paper on top of them. And then I added a rose tab at the top so that it stands out. And I stitched the side and the bottom so that we have a top loading pocket. This is the next one. I love this one because it's a very white and cream color palette. There's the French lace on the bottom. I used it as a tuck spot. And in there I have some antique ledger, just a little scrap piece, and this really pretty tag from the kit as well. And a really sweet floral tab right on the top. Now for this one, we have a side loading pocket. So I stitched the top and I stitched the bottom. So you have a little pocket space in the center and then this is the front. Ah, these look so cute together. And then there's this one, probably Rosabella's favorite. <laughs> we have the rose paper on the back, some embossing on the side for interest. Then on the pocket, added some of that gorgeous pink lace, a ruffle at the bottom. Here we have a pocket. I've just added two tags. I haven't decorated these. These are beautiful as they are, but you can always add more. And then they just tuck into the tuck spot on the front. And I decided to stitch this one on the side and on the bottom. So it's another top loading pocket here at the top. Another great idea is you can add just pieces of lace in the pockets as well. Since this is Rosabella sewing journal, of course I want pieces of fabric tucked in to little corners of the pockets, so I think that would be a really sweet idea. And let's say for this one, since there's just a tag there, you can easily take one of the envelopes, let's say this one here, and you can paper clip these together and put them right on top of this floating pocket. So you can also put your ephemera inside of your floating pockets as well as the outside. I can't be more in love with how this turned out. This is just so pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay. I can't stop looking at them. They're absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. And they're going to add so much interest, texture, color, and functionality to Rosabella's sewing journal and to the lucky person who gets to have a piece of Rosabella's world. Just to give you an idea of how a beautiful floating pocket like this would look on a page. I am ready to go to Rose Heaven. <laughs> I think Rosabella would be very proud. <laughs> I think 
the story of Rosabella is completely unfolding into something that's even more beautiful than I expected. Something so simple, like a floating pocket, just from one sheet of paper, can completely transform a page. This is so much fun. I can do this all day. <laughs> just picking and choosing where these little floating pockets and pages will go and the coordinating tags to go along with it. This is one of my lace flip outs that I have stitched. Really nice, sweet vintage lace. Every little piece of ephemera that you make will always find its place and belong on a page in your journal. That is the beauty of creating your own journal with treasures that you absolutely love. Decorating it and making it your own is one of the most special parts of the entire process. And if you're interested to see the full flip of the journal, that video will be up very soon, as soon as I finish all of the little details of the ephemera and other little pieces that I want to include. I hope that you guys loved this video, and if your heart was set on any of the new digitals, any of the textile fabric treasures, I am so happy to be back and sharing this world of Rosabella with you, and I hope that it has inspired you to venture into your own world of creativity. Until next time, sending you so much peace and so much love.